Welcome back to Minding Our Businesses, where CEO and COO sisters share unfiltered conversation about running three companies together and and the the real life between between it all. Hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the podcast episode four. Minding our businesses. <laughs> uh, maybe should that be the new intro? <laughs> so this episode, we are talking about building your confidence. And I got to tell you, this one took a lot of prep for me because it's kind of like a concept I've never really thought about, like how to give tips on. I know we were talking about this too and going back and forth. And I was like, you know, Rachel, I got to tell you something. I think I just have confidence. Yeah, no, I think that like I'm I'm no Freud, but I definitely think a confidence base level comes from I'm no Freud. I'm no Freud, but your parents, right? Like I definitely think For sure. like I, I'm sure some people have very different experiences with like how their parents spoke to them or whatnot. And I'm sure a lot of this can be psychological or like something you've kind of like grown up with. So it's hard to kind of break the mold of. I think we got lucky in the sense like we had parents who were very honest with us, but also like built us up. Definitely. Um, so I'm very grateful for that and I'm very appreciative of that. But I think it's kind of like either you had that and you're lacking self-confidence or you want to kind of improve it or you didn't have that and like you kind of need to rebuild from scratch. So it's it was hard because it's like how do you give tactical advice on such a concept that's just abstract you know I think it's a hard um subject for people to talk about as well and and say out loud like they're not confident or they feel insecure I definitely feel for people because there's definitely moments where I don't feel confident of course same me too I think it's not again like the theme of everything we talk about is it's not that we always are these things or that we always are perfect but I think we've found solutions to kind of like cope or like are in the mindset to get there yeah totally amen Carly So I, like I always do, read my books in the morning and I try to get messages from the universe. And this morning I was like, okay, during my meditation, we're going to be talking about confidence. I need to be a leader in confidence. How can I explain confidence? Of course, I looked up some quotes and, you know, I'm loving Napoleon Hill right now. I'm deep in Napoleon Hill's book. Napoleon Hill was best friends with Andrew Carnegie. And so I have two quotes from them that I wanted to read to kind of get us off on the right foot. And the first one is the development of self-confidence starts with the elimination of this demon called fear. Dun, dun, fear. Dun. Napoleon Hill. I loved that because I do think that is one of the most tangible quotes I've heard regarding like what to remove in order to gain. And I think obviously to be fearless can give massive amounts of confidence. I really resonated with, and you sent me this quote, um, because I never actually thought of confidence equaling being fearless. Or like you've probably never thought about what's the opposite of confidence. Yeah. Fear. Which is so funny because when you're not confident, when you feel insecure about something, that just means you have an anxiety towards it or you're feeling... Or you feel like something could go wrong, right. et cetera. Um, but when I read that quote, I was like, you know, it's funny. I resonate with that because I do try to be fearless. Yeah. Well, like kind of re- relating that back to myself, like when I was opening Parlor, you know, I was opening the world's largest and most unique beauty destination, 11,000 square feet. A lot of people had fear that I didn't have, you know, like I even had very people, people that were very close in my life who looked at me and they were like, you need to be careful. Should you do this? This this could be too much. Don't risk. get too big too quick. Yeah. Should you have this many products on the shelves? Yeah. And, or like, can you do this? You know. And I. It's funny because when those things were said to me, I genuinely ne- they never had crossed my mind before. But also, why does that fuel me more? Because you want to prove that you can do it. Yeah. Like I that type of stuff. Like that. When people think you can't do something, it pr- it like literally just fuels me more. Well, you got to go all in. Like when I was opening parlor, if I didn't fully believe in myself, if I didn't fully remove all fears, uh, there was absolutely no way that I ever would have been successful. It wasn't a thought that I had at the time, but it, it is looking back in hindsight, something that I definitely exuded. So it's like remove the fear, gain more confidence, I think is like the first point to make here. The second quote that I pulled was by Andrew Carnegie, and he was saying this to Napoleon Hill. I, God, I would just love to hear the conversations these two had. He said, confidence is a state of mind, like a mindset. I'm just adding that in. Necessary to succeed 
And the starting point of developing self-confidence is definiteness of purpose. Mm. Andrew Carnegie. Another word that I thought was a super helpful way to start this episode is what is your purpose? That is a big question I get a lot when people are like, can I pick your brain? How do I find my purpose? How do I find my passion? I guess a lot of people could find themselves in a way of insecurity or lacking self-confidence if they don't have purpose and if they are filled with fear. Purpose is definitely something that I think there is a lot of insecurities around because mm-hmm. it's, especially when you're leaving like as a college student and you're like trying to find what you're meant to be or meant right. to do. And to me, I believe your purpose is a lot, has a lot to do with your work. Well, that would be my exact answer as well. Yeah. You know, like, and, and for me, you know, I totally respect the stay at home mom a hundred percent. Like I have nothing against stay at home moms, but for me, but that is their work. That is their work. Yeah. But, but for me, that's not my whole purpose. Like personally, I just cannot, It doesn't need to be. One of my purposes is, and I am very fulfilled by being a mother, but I need something else that like kind of makes me tick, keeps me going, gives me passion. And, and that is work for me. It was never like I one day was like, oh, it's my passion to open parlor. My passion sort of fell on my lap. So I think kind of like determining your passion or your purpose can sometimes be organic or it could be something that just makes you tick. But I definitely think you need to love your job. I definitely think you need to be happy in your workplace. It is like 90% of your life. If you work full time, your work is 90% of your life. 100%. Again, another statistic from Carly that is inaccurate. But it feels right. (laughs) Okay, number one. I think the first tip in confidence is you need to accept yourself as you are right now. Not I will love myself more when I lose 20 pounds or I will (laughs) love myself more when I get this job or whatever. It's like, what are you right now? Fat, skinny, hungry, sad, depressed, in a shithole, fucking whatever you are. Definitely hungry. What Always hungry. Whatever you are, blah, 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 blah. I love myself right now. Say it out loud. Use language. Use positive affirmations. Whatever the hell you need to do. But do not say anything negative about yourself. You cannot. You literally can't. You have to say, you know, I love myself right now. You know, like, and I'm... I went into this, like, I've gained a lot of weight recently. I have been pregnant for two years straight coming out of COVID where I gained 20 pounds and my honeymoon. Literally, I'm just like up in weight, like whatever. I don't really care. You know, like I just know that I am and it's like just a number on the scale. And if I want to do something about it, when the time is right, I will. I mean, I've always been overweight. (laughs) (laughs) But you've also always been confident. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like you say, I'm going to be happy when I do this. I'm going to be happy when I do that. Like I could look at you and say, I'm not going to be happy until I lose the 50 pounds I need to lose for my wedding. But that's not true. I am happy now. Yeah, you're happy right now. You're beautiful right now. I also think too, like looking at like being like, oh, like I think some people would hear you say like, oh, I'm overweight and like wonder if I should look at you and be like, are you no, okay? You're like, not no. overweight. No, like you're overweight. Absolutely. Like, Tell me. I like that. Like, let's just be fucking real. Like I am too. And it's just like, namaste. I accept myself. I'm just like so self-aware about it. Like the people who are like, accept that like, yourself and your body. It's like, I accept myself in my body, but do I feel like being overweight is healthy? I don't think so. Well, that's definitely something I agree to. Like, I think a lot of people in today's industry are like, accept and like, act like that is healthy. I know that I'm not the healthiest I could be right now at like, obviously I'm pregnant. So like, there's just only so much I could do, but like being overweight isn't healthy. So it's also like, you have to be realistic. You have to be smart. You can't like just ignore. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying if you want to make a change, if you want to gain more confidence, start with loving yourself. And that really fuels anything you want to do. Because if I did want to hop on the treadmill tomorrow, or if I wanted to start eating healthier, that's giving myself self-love. Well, a hundred percent. To love myself it's, even more. Confidence yeah. is self-love. Yeah. Like, that's why it bothers me when people are like, are you taking time for you? I'm like, do you see how confident I am? Like, I don't miss a manicure. I, you will never see my cuticles overgrown. And if we did miss a manicure, we will reschedule the manicure. <laughs> Amen, Carly. <laughs> no, like I literally don't ever stop taking care of myself. I would feel so insecure if I thought maybe you were looking at my cuticles like in a way that like weren't. Would you? Yeah, like I don't like that concept of not oh. being well kept. Like I like to come to work. I, I like. I was like that. I like to have my makeup and hair done. I like to be like prepped like those things make Mm. me happy like I like my armpits lasered I like to know if I was to lift my armpit 
you would look at my armpit and be like, wow, what a beautiful armpit. But that builds your confidence. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, like I take care of myself, so I'm confident. You know those things you're insecure about. You do something about it. Yeah. It builds your confidence. Exactly. It's like, it's, it is one of my purposes in my life is to take care of myself so I feel confident. I love a blow dry. It's not, when I'm getting a blow dry, to me, that's like kind of work in a way. <laughs> I know that that's funny, but it's, it is to me though. No, because, I feel you. Because it's like, I, I know I need to get it done. It's not a choice. If I just like wear my hair curly all week, nothing against curly hair, I don't feel the most confident version of myself. I don't feel like the best me I can be. It just makes me feel like my hair is knotted and ratchet and I can't function and I don't know what to do the next day and I'm not, I'm not confident. Yeah. Okay, so another tip in building more confidence as I was trying to kind of get a little tactical with my advice here was only pay attention to yourself. I think this is one of my strengths. I do this very well. I stay in my lane and don't look at other people. This could be a little bit of a weakness for me. Really? Not like fully, but like I'll definitely get tied up into social media. Well, social media is a bitch. I mean, yeah. I think it's super easy. I think Instagram's toxic, right? Like I think it only shows like the positive things. I think that's why the world's gravitating to TikTok because it's more real and it's a little bit more raw. And I think people on Instagram need to be that. Like I think the, the day of the influencer is dead of like the I'm perfect. I live this perfect life. Look at these perfect things. Everyone's like, we call your bluff, your bullshit until 100%. you're like, until one day you're making an announcement being like, I'm getting a divorce. It's like, stop acting like you were so perfect this whole time. Like no one's perfect. Perfect, nothing's perfect. Be stop. real. So like, I think personally don't compare yourself to others and stop assuming everyone on social media is just living this like utopian lifestyle. Yeah. You, you got to do it. Are you saying that that's where you kind of have your weakness? It's not like my full weakness. Like I just see sometimes or I'll compare like my relationship or like silly little things that couples do. And I'm like, why is my relationship not always like that? Like theirs is, but I don't actually mean that. I just think I like well, go they're there. only posting the good moments. Yeah. Like I go there for a second, but then I'm like, Shut up. Everybody fights. Honestly, Mammy, our grandmother once said to me too, like about relationships, she was like, if you're not fighting with your spouse, you should be concerned because it means there's a lack of passion. Right. It means there's a lack of heat. And I loved that advice because it's like, you shouldn't feel bad about a fight with your spouse or someone you love. It makes you grow closer. It bonds you. It I typically don't feel bad when we do because I know we have to. In order. Yeah. I mean, it's two different people living two different lives forming Col together. Col colliding. I don't look at other people on social media or look at other people and think, I wish I had their lives. I'm definitely inspired by other people. Right. Like I'm like, let me, I think it would be really cool if like I added this to my bedroom yeah. or like if I started applying this to my life, but it's definitely more actively applicable than it is like envy. I think the point too is like, I'll see other people, but like, I'm still obsessed with me. <laughs> yeah. You have to be obsessed. Like, with I you. think I'm the prettiest overweight girl there ever was. Yeah. Like truly, I believe that. I really believe, I believe that too. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> You're so you. beautiful. You know, I, I feel like when I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm, I'm beautiful. You know, other people are beautiful too, but I think that's it too. Like I don't ever have envy of other people because I feel that about myself. Yeah. Again, back to self love. Like when I see somebody else that looks amazing, I'm not like, Oh fuck. I wish I looked like them. I'm like, I'm so happy for you that you look like that and that I look like this. And like, and if I want to look like that, I'm going to try. Yeah. Like if you want something motivate, yeah. be motivated by that. Okay. Professionally though, in that regard, I would say like, I definitely 0% of the time do this. I do not look at competition. Me neither. I don't even think competition exists. It's like a flaw in me. When I opened my salon in Framingham, you know, it's a small town and I kind of like made a wave and I didn't know everybody hated me. Like I didn't know every other salon owner or hairstylist was like, who is this girl? It's a very dramatic industry. It, it can be a very dramatic industry. I honestly was so naive. I genuinely had no clue that people would dislike me. I was like, oh, like you do you, I do me. There's plenty of heads to touch. Like whoever kind of puts themselves out there from a marketing perspective better or does the better service or has a better bond with the consumer, that's the way I looked at it, you know, would take the lead. There's enough clients for everyone. Definitely. It's just a silly business, honestly. And I just feel like everyone, that's what makes each business different is like whatever your niche is. Yeah. Like that's what makes you great. Yeah. In business, I definitely do never compare myself to others. I was always... That's why we are what we are though. And that's why I have what I have because I was always so busy being focused on myself and focused on my business. I was never spending time getting distracted by what someone else was doing or what I wasn't doing. I was too busy. I was too busy building it's an a waste empire. Of time. Yeah. Like you don't build an empire by watching other people. 
That's that's not what happens. You build an empire by going deep within and building that confidence. So yeah, like I would have definitely been like in a shell of like insecurity and lack of confidence, lack of purpose and fear if I was sitting there focused on other people and what they were doing or what I was not doing. I would definitely have spiraled out of control. I think this is also huge in our type of businesses, like hair stylists, for example. Like definitely. It's really tough to like do someone's hair and take it from very dark to very light. It's not easy what they do. And it's a very personal, chemistry. it's a very personal experience. So it's very easy to compare and look at what your neighbor is doing or what this person's doing or look online and be like, Oh, that hairstylist is better than me. But mm-hmm. I feel like that's something we instill in our girls to be confident. Yeah, actually, that's a very good point, Carly, because I will say what we don't have a dramatic salon. We don't have bitchy hairstylists that work on the floor. We don't have any of that. And I think it was definitely, it's a part of our culture is that we don't have competition with each other. It's definitely a collaborative environment where everybody is like, I think it's also too, everybody's busy. You know, everyone's fully booked. Yeah. So no one's like looking at each other being like, Oh, like she's busier than me or whatnot. So I do think that's to their advantage, but I do think we have like an environment where we work together and we don't put our ego before our team. And it's like, don't look at the person next to you. Look at your client. Focus on the customer experience. Focus on the the service. Focus on what you can do better. Point in case, focus on you. The next point, I think, in kind of building a little bit more confidence is define who you are and own it. If you're quirky, if you're weird, if you're tall, if you're short, if you have big boobs, small boobs, whatever it is, like just define, say out loud, this is, I define who I am as this person, but then also take it a step further. I like this restaurant. I like this shirt on me. You know, like we talked I like about this hair this. color. I, I like, like it. Yeah, exactly. Like I like it. I think feel good in this. So like uh, we were talking about this example yesterday, Carly and I, a little bit, we always kind of banter beforehand. And I was like, you know, I could buy a shirt and I could wear it to work. And you, I love it. Like, I feel good about the shirt. (laughs) I don't care what anyone thinks about the shirt. And I could come to work and you could look at me and be like, what the fuck is that shirt? (laughs) And uh, I think in that That path, I have a foil. Of course it happens. It happens to both of us. I have a fork in the road. I can either like succumb to you and be like, oh my God, like you like this shirt. shirt. Or I can be like, like, no, no, no. I like this shirt. I like this shirt. And I'm going to keep this shirt on and I'm obsessed with this shirt. Honestly, that makes me like the shirt more. What? Like when you do that. That's because it's confidence. Yeah. Confidence is a, a subliminal message. It's a it's a body language. So it's kind of like define what you like and then own what you like and then just like kind of go through life doing those things. But that means truly like what you like. That's where I think social media gets in the way and that's why I was saying that before. It's like you see all of these people with their unique style, the way their homes look, the what cars they drive, what foods they eat, what et cetera. And then you're like comparing it to yourself. Like, I want to be cool like this person. Like, no, do what you like. Well, be who you like. If you think about it, that's what makes somebody interesting is right. when, when they own what they like. It's a unique perspective. So like there shouldn't just be one way to live in the world. You sh- everybody so should boring. be different. Yeah, be like so we would, boring. I love quirky. I love people who have little quirks. I accept people's quirks. I grew up with quirks, you know, like I had a snaggle tooth, like we've talked about, and I had people who loved me for that, you know? And I remember one of my mentors, Alexa Winner, she used to be like, I'm so jealous of your tooth. Like, and I would be like, Lex. <laughs> what? What? Like, why are I you jealous? Her. She used to be like, I wish I had a tooth like that. And I'm like, why? I love her. Why do you wish you had a tooth? She was like, it just makes you different. And I was, and that was such an eye-opening perspective. You've hated that tooth your whole life. I've hated it, but she's literally like, accepting me for it, loving me for it. And it like taught me a lot about just being me, you know? Yeah. And you got to know what you like and dislike. That's just point blank. Well, I think a really healthy exercise too was kind of like defining those things. Like I remember at a young age, I was like, my favorite color is this. My favorite restaurant is this. You were so good at that. I don't like these foods. I don't like this, you know, type of activity, whatever it is. And like, I think even in adulthood, that's a healthy exercise to kind of be like, what do I like and what do I not like? And kind of defining yourself. Yeah. I see that a lot on social media. I actually saw someone from, she's a client of ours. She was posting about like, tell your kids how to say no 
or yes, or teach your kids how to right. say no or yes. No gray area. Yeah, where it's like, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, or I want to eat this, or I don't want to eat this. Right. So you can teach them young, because that was something our dad yes. taught us. Oh, definitely. I like, well, and mom is like the most confident person on the entire planet. I mean, literally, she just enters a room and is just like a bold force. And I think we probably have adopted a lot of our confidence from her. But yeah, I think it's like no gray area. And also the way you say things to people in that way matter. Like, don't, don't be like, I would love if this, it's like, let's do this. You know, the, the language you use can also exude levels of confidence. Yeah. I would say going along with that too, like mom and dad, we surround ourselves with people definitely build us up. Definitely. Like we've talked about before, but that like kind of help us with our confidence or right. feed the confidence. Right. So then we are like, okay, we have a right to be confident. Yep. You know? Well, I think you have to find the people that support you mutually, right? Like, so let's say you have a friend who kind of knocks down your confidence or sort of makes you feel like shit. First of all, get rid of them. Or a boyfriend. A boyfriend. Or a girlfriend. girlfriend or a spouse or whatever it is. Like, if they knock you down or if there's ever times where they make you feel like sad or insecure, I really have to tell you, I don't think they should have a place in your life. I, I, re I do not. And I'm even talking about family, honestly. Like I'm someone who does not believe that just because somebody is family means that they have to remain in your life. I, I think of family very differently. To me, it's an energetic bond. It's not just, you know, I came out of you or like it came from you or whatever it is. It's like, do you lift me up continuously or do you not? And You're, if you don't, bye-bye. Nah. <laughs> nah. 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 Okay, you're done. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I really, I think it's that mutual And if you're going to consistently up. get that negative vibe from that person, like stop believing that they're going to change and like take control of your whole own life. You can't change And move people. on. Yeah, I think we could talk about that for like 45 minutes straight. It's just like, you can't change someone. You can, ex I think you have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Like if there's somebody negative in your life who's not lifting you up or not giving you confidence, you need to communicate and say like, this isn't working for me. The way our relationship is going, like it doesn't work for me. I don't feel good when I'm around you. It would really help me if you did more of this. Could you agree to doing this differently? Mm -hmm. But like at the same time, like if you've said that multiple times and it's not changing, then you need to change something. Yeah. And you need to stand still on your own because say these people in your life that are giving you these honest feedback, like if you looked at me and you were like, Carly, that outfit doesn't look good. Like I respect you for that. Well, and I like, think I want to be difference between honesty and breaking somebody down. Yeah. Like if I think you can feel it too. Cause like if I was constantly looking at you and being like, you look like shit that would be me breaking you down one random day you wearing an outfit that's like misjudged like in like you know your belly buttons hanging out which, no it's never <gasps> not you, it's, the belly button it's never happened that would be so upsetting be awful That'd but be i'm just upsetting. saying like, if i was not honest with you then i'd also be a a bitch yeah so it's like i i want people to be honest with me i'm not saying like don't like you know my friend courtney is a perfect example of this she's like totally real totally honest but like 98% of the time building me up. If there's ever moments where like, I'm like, do you like this shirt? Or if I'm asking for that opinion, like she's like, no, I, I hate that shirt. You know what I mean? Like, or I love that shirt, whatever it is. But I want the honesty. Yeah. Same thing with my friend Gabby, because she will tell me, like I'll go to her yes. and be like, is this cool? And like, she has a cool style. And I'll, she'll be like, no. And then I'll be like, I'm still wearing it. Like we right. kind of talked well, there's about there's your before. confidence. Yeah. So like, it's not just family who can give you that. Totally. Like you got to surround yourself with friends because you're not with your family 24 seven. Yeah. Um, and like we've talked about before, they might not always be giving you what you need. Mm -hmm. But if you have friends that you surround yourself with, which a lot of people are with their friends uh, more than more often than not, they need to be able to build your confidence as well. A hundred percent. We've talked about people and the people you surround yourself with, but I think it, in this particular topic, it couldn't be more relevant in terms of confidence. So, you know, if you're looking to gain more confidence or if you're looking to kind of like improve your self-esteem or this angle of your life, I would say one very tactical tool I would turn to is journaling and writing and writing your feelings down because it's just such an easy way to physically look at what you're feeling and define these things and then read them and then say them out loud and get in touch with yourself a little bit more. Yeah. And also like 
do something different you wouldn't typically do. Like take a risk. Yeah. Or like change what you do on a weekend. Like if you do the same thing every Saturday, like do something different that you probably wouldn't have done before. Or that you really want to do that you're being swayed by other people not to do. Like dad always told me, like if you can go sit down at a restaurant and have lunch or dinner by yourself, then you're a really cool person. I used to go get food by myself all Some the time. people don't feel secure enough to do that. And like, I see I, that's hard for me to understand yeah. and I, maybe I'm at a really, and I'm grateful. I'm at a really great place of confidence. My friend, Charlie, I used to tell me when I was in college and had braces and you know, with a snaggle tooth growing out of my nose and maybe like not the best hair or whatever. <laughs> I didn't know any of those things. He was like, you're the most confident person I've ever met in my entire life. And that those words, was that offensive? <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I've looked back on that comment and I'm like, was that mean or was that nice? I really, it stuck with me for a very long time because I didn't know I was confident. I just was confident. I just owned who I was. Like, I wasn't like, you know, yeah, I would maybe when I laughed, I would like kind of cover my teeth a little bit because I was trying to right. be polite and not have like corn and stuck in my braces. But like, I like corn. Cut, cut, what's that song? Corn, mm. you've a got big the lump juice. enough. <laughs> you've got the juice. You've got the juice. <laughs> we could record a whole musical with this. Mic. We're done. Um, but yeah, like I didn't really know I was that confident at that time. And like even in high school, I was confident and loud. But you know what? I, th- of course, it comes with its own insecurities, but owning who you are. You believed. And I think we can definitely speak on this because we weren't always the prettiest, the skinniest, or what norm was supposed still to be. Still not. Still not. But I still believe I am. Yeah, it's, it's what you say to yourself. So I think all in all, take the time to like give yourself self-care. Take the time to define your passion, your purpose. Take the time to identify what you're fearful of and what, what might be causing you like an energetic block and get rid of it and try to find a way to work towards getting rid of it, whatever that means to you. I agree. You can definitely do things in your life to make you feel more confident. It's not just a gift that was given to us. No. It had took work. Everything that is good in your life takes work. Everything that is makes you happy is work. Whether that be getting a wax, yeah. getting your nails done like we talked about before, yeah. sitting outside by yourself. I mean, I get my my big toe lasered. I mean, I get my face lasered. Yeah, like I, I don't want to have hair on my big toe. If somebody looked down at my toe and saw a hair, I would be insecure. So I get my big toe laser to take care of myself. And now you have no hair on your toe. Yeah. So in conclusion, let's wrap up this podcast episode on get your toe lasered. (laughs) And be fearless. And be fearless and define you. I wish for you, whoever's listening to this, that you are able to somehow, some way, even if you're already very confident, find a way to get even more confidence or self-esteem from this. You're beautiful. You're perfect as you are. We accept and love you and we wish you nothing but the best. XOXO. Gossip girl. Gossip girl.